So in this lecture, we make a pretty uh, bold claim with the title here. We're talking about the generalized solution to the wave equation in a horizontally stratified ocean. And so, you know, uh, the more general we make a problem, the more efficient our solution is at solving lots of problems. And that's sort of the approach here, okay? And we're just working within our wave number integration technique. So the transform technique that we've been applying to the two waveguides, the idealized waveguide and the, and the Pecoris waveguide. So I just want to lay out, you know, at this point that, that the details, the recipe for that method should be pretty comfortable. And yeah, I want to, I want to apply this in a more general method. Okay. So I want to consider an arbitrary ocean <laughs> and uh, arbitrary layered let's say it's layered ocean <laughs> uh in the sense that it's totally horizontally stratified and nothing's happening uh nothing's happening in the horizontal okay there's no there's no interesting stuff happening um and we're in cylindrical coordinates okay so it's azimuthally symmetric and basically we have a bunch of layers okay And by a bunch, I mean like five. That's all I'm going to draw. But let's say there's many to go, many that go this way. Okay, and we're just going to be in one of these layers, M. Okay, and we can do the same thing we do with the Pecoris waveguide, right? Basically, we know what we're going to do here. We're going to write the wave equation every single layer. Then we're going to transform the wave equation. Um, into algebraic equations, and now we're going to have a system of algebraic equations that we're going to solve simultaneously, right? That's the solution. We know we can do that. We did it with two layers. Let's do it with three. Let's do it with 300, right? We, that's the, the logic we're following. So we took it as far as writing down this doubly transformed um, version, right? where we're going to have um, omega, kr, and m, right, as transform variables, right? And then on the right-hand side, let's just say we're going to have some source function that can be a function of z. So this is sort of this generalized equation that we're trying to solve. And we've transformed here just to be, you know, from the time domain to the frequency domain, from the R to the KR. Oh, and I think, um, yeah, okay. I mixed up something here. Let's erase this M here. The M here being, um, this is the Mth layer, okay? I always mix up the, the symbols across lectures. It's, I should really not do that, I'm sorry. Edit this part out, if I remember, probably won't, don't worry. Just trying to keep you on your toes with a little entertainment. Okay, so this is an ordinary differential equation. What is the solution to this equation? It's so obvious that you can barely contain yourself, right? So this is an ODE with an easy solution, right? So the homogeneous solution which is the solution to that equation if the right-hand side is zero, right? It's plane waves. And I'm just gonna write these plane waves as phi m plus, and actually, no, here I'm gonna, here I'm gonna just be fully explicit. So phi omega kr and then m plus and phi omega kr m minus, right? So plus for the positive in the exponent or propagating up and minus for the negative in the exponent or propagating down, okay? And these are both functions of kr and z, right? Um, and then we're gonna have the particular solution, right? How do we find the particular solution? Well, we need to know the details of f, s, z to find the particular solution. So for now, let's just say we're going to have phi hat omega kr in layer m. That's going to be the particular solution. So our final total solution is going to be 
phi omega kr m, and I'll just be explicit here, it's a function of kr, it's a function of z, is equal to phi hat omega kr m plus some function of kr, right? An unknown amplitude by omega kr plus m, and then some unknown amplitude for the other term minus omega kr m. What do these unknown amplitudes depend on? Boundary conditions, right? We need to know the boundary conditions in order to know what these AR, AMs are, and we saw that much, much earlier, right? So what are the boundary conditions? Well, let's just go back to our drawing here, right? So in every, in every um, level here, we're going to have AM plus, AM minus, we're going to have AM minus 1 plus, AM minus 1 minus, AM plus 1 plus, AM plus 1 plus, etc. right? So uh, quite obviously, there's linkages. Um, the boundary conditions connect these AMs. So essentially, what we're saying is uh, we're really moving this whole layered system towards some sort of matrix form where um, we're going to try and solve all these simultaneous or solve all these equations simultaneously, right? So it's really uh, it's really desperately crying out for um, for matrix algebra. Now the interesting thing is that of course across these layers, if we think about this being C naught, we can actually have you know different values. Um, of C in each layer, right? And we're saying that, uh, of course, by our solution here, we're saying that they're, it's homogeneous within each layer, but of course we can make these layers super thin. And, you know, we can use this as a way to represent um, a depth dependent uh, sound speed profile. Okay? Now, let's say, wow, well, let's say, no source in mth layer. Okay, so there's no source in the mth layer. I'm just going to be going to drop some of those subscripts. Okay, so this is mth um, phi plus right e v i k z z phi minus is equal to e to the minus i k z z and f s z is equal to zero, okay? And k z, of course, equal to k m, where this is in mth layer squared minus k r squared, okay? And then we can simply say, well, phi omega, so transformed into the solution to the Helmholtz equation, then it's just going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of a minus e to the minus i k z z plus a plus e to the i k z z. And then we have our j naught k r r kr dkr whoops okay again ran out of board this is just inverse hankel okay so what about those boundary conditions what about them so let's apply the boundary conditions to the general solution Well, so as we approach um, M, 
the nth layer from above and below, we need the velocity. And the pressure to be continuous, right? So in general, um, we can compute pretty quickly what that's going to look like for our general solution with no source, right? We can bring that the d by dz into the integral, um, and we're just going to end up with an i k z a minus e to the minus i k z z plus an i kz a plus e to the i kz z times our j naught part of our transform kr dkr okay so this is for any layer with no source and so we can just you know Apply this at layer m, apply this at layer m minus 1, and things need to match up, okay? So let's add a point source. Fs of z now is going to be equal to q delta function of z minus z source. So we actually already know what that should look like. Our particular solution um, is going to be omega kr, and now the, the nth layer, q over 4 pi e to the i kz, the absolute value of z minus zs, and over i K, Z, okay? And so, again, we can inverse Hankel to get the particular solution just to the Helmholtz equation now, just the singly transformed field. And we just plug it into our inverse transform. We end up with this familiar looking integral. J naught, KR, DKR. Okay. And then from there, we can compute the term that we'd need to add to our boundary condition um, to satisfy uh, the matching condition at each layer with a source. Pretty straightforward derivative if there ever was one. So it depends if you're on the, talking about the layer above the source or below. That's how you get that sine function there. Sine with a G. Okay. And then, of course, we need to worry about the pressure. Um, pressure BC. Pressure has to be continuous. So in other words, by omega at R and Z, as Z goes to layer M, has to be equal to the same thing coming from the other direction. And of course, et cetera, on the other side. So we can pretty much solve any problem with this approach, right? We basically just have a lot of these equations we need to so solve simultaneously, and it just turns into a lot of algebra very quickly. So my question to you, if you want to keep watching this video, um, what's the easiest problem for us to solve? Well, let's solve the one we already solved. Just two layers. We're going to put a source in the first layer, this is going to be pressure release. We're going to have C1, row 1. And then at some depth H, we're going to have another layer, C2, 
row two. And this is gonna go off to infinity, so we're gonna have a radiation condition. This two layer system is also known as Packer's waveguide. Now if you're getting bored, you think, why can't I do something interesting like a three layer system? It's because it gets pretty messy pretty fast. Okay, so in layer one, We have impulsive source, okay? So we want to just write down the solution to the equation using the generalized solution. So let's say omega, uh, omega kr, and then I'm going to put a 1 there, so m equals 1. So we just use what we wrote down, right? So here's our particular solution. Z1. We've got our A plus 1. That's going to be our big unknown. And we've got our A minus. Whoops. I don't know why I put a 2 there. We've got our A minus 1. It's the other big unknown. Okay. And I, you notice I've put... Um, K, Z, comma, 1, in the sense that K, Z, comma, 1 is equal to the wave number in the first layer minus K, R squared, right? Just trying to keep things, a little accounting of things. K1 equals omega over C1, because they have different sound speeds. Okay. Layer 2. or the bottom layer, we're going to have the doubly transformed field 2. Now we're going to have just no source term, just simply A2 plus E to the I K Z 2 Z plus A2 minus. Okay. So what can we, can we automatically say about this? Of course, we need A2 minus. Go to zero by the radiation condition. So we know that the solution's going to look like E to the I K Z two Z minus H. I've just combined, um, done some combining here where A two tilde plus whoops is equal to A two E to the I K Z two H. Okay. So we have three unknowns in these, these two equations here. We have some three unknowns. A2 tilde plus, A1 plus, A1 minus. Okay? And we have three equations. We've got the surface the pressure continuity and the vertical velocity continuity, right? Those relate all these things. So the surface, I should write three unknowns, three equations. Okay. Surface, pressure, velocity. These, of course, are our BCs. Okay. So the surface BC basically just tells us um, omega WKR1 at Z equals 0 is equal to 0. And that gives us a nice relationship that A1 plus plus A1 minus equals Q over 4 pi. 
z1 z source over k z1. Okay? This is all under the same integrand. Okay? The velocity. Right now we're talking about this here, d phi one. I'm just dropping, I'm just <laughs> dropping some of the uh, subscripts here. Well, this is, I guess, the original, the original um, untransformed field. Okay. So let's plug our solution into that. And what do we get at the end? Okay. Well, okay. Velocity. So we need to we need to just take our we already pre differentiated it. So we're really just copying things down here. Make sure we put the densities in. A one minus. And this of course needs to be evaluated at h i k z one over row one a one plus e to the i k z one h minus q over four pi row one times the source term h minus z s okay that's on the left hand side right hand side a little bit shorter we got our a tilde two plus i k z two over row two e to the i k z two h minus z s. Yeah. Okay. All right. And let's see. So that gives us, you know, there's, uh, we can do some simplifying there, I guess. I'm just looking to see if this is worth showing you. Um, sure, yeah, we can, I mean, okay. We can move the right hand side to left hand side and then make it all in terms of Q, but I'm not, I'm gonna skip that. I'm gonna skip that. We can move these terms around. I think you can do that. Or maybe I should really use the uh, technology here. Let's see if I can do that. This would be entertaining. I'm gonna take this here. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to move this over here. Wow, this is opening. This is blowing my mind right now. Oh, and then I'm going to take this. I'm going to move this up here. And then I'm going to go back to the pencil. Let's change this equal sign to a minus sign and this to an equal sign. All right, and that is giving you now this whole thing in terms of you got the unknowns on the left-hand side, the knowns on the right-hand side, and we could probably multiply through by some stuff here and simplify it even more, but well, not really. We could, put the, we could do the density ratio thing, but let's just leave it at that. Okay, not going to do this on the fly. That's really our velocity, and let's use our pressure, <laughs> our pressure uh, term here. Really get carried away here. Okay, so... Pressure, a little bit less messy because we don't have to deal with all the uh, um, the derivative, everything the derivatives bring down. So there's our A1 plus term. Here's our A1 minus term. Then we can write our A2 plus, and that's going to be equal to 4 pi i kz1 h minus zs over kz1, where I did some pre prearranging here. Okay, so let's let's really exploit the technology here. So uh, we've got our a1 plus here, a1 plus here, got our a1 minus here, a1 minus here, and our uh, a2 plus here, and I forgot to write a tilde on it, so let's do that now. 
what other mistakes have I made? Okay, so this is looking like you need to write it um, in a matrix form, right? And we had um, the surface equation from the previous page here. So I'm gonna write this in a matrix times A1 plus A1 minus A2 plus tilde. It's gonna equal some right hand side. So that's why I want to, to, that's why I did that cutting and pasting, right? So the equations that we have on this page, let's actually start from the bottom. We'll start with the pressure here, and we'll put the velocity here, and we'll put the surface here. So times A1 plus, we have E to the K, E to the I, KZ1H, right, from here. Um, then we're going to have the e to the minus i kz1 h and then we're going to have just a minus one here the slightly messier velocity just means we're going to have a kz1 e to the i kz1 h and that's all over row one we're going to have a minus kz1 e to the minus i kz1 h and this is all over row one and then we're going to have a minus kz2 over row two for the a tilde plus and then if you look back at our pressure you know that was the easiest one the surface or sorry our surface um, one we just have one one zero and then on the right hand side we're going to have um e to the i kz1 zs for our velocity row i'm going to put the uh, row one there and then we have the e to the i kz1 h minus zs and for our pressure row at one H minus ZS, and you're going to say to me, oh, but you forgot a bunch of terms. I'm going to write these terms just, uh, I'm going to write them over here since I really don't have room. 4 pi KZ1 over Q I. So you could write those on either side, but I'm going to write them over there. So why, why write them like this? Well, because I know that all of you linear algebra heads out there are just thinking, this is an eigenvalue problem, right? We have A, B, mega. Find eigenvalues. Such that mega equals lambda B. Okay, the generalized eigenvalue problem. None of these symbols are not necessarily related. <laughs> it's my disclaimer. Some symbols may not appear as, I don't know, I gotta think that one out a little bit more. Right? You just, you can't help yourself but starting to go down this road, right? A minus lambda i. Oops, that should be absolute value. Lambda one minus lambda, lambda two minus lambda. It's just, it's just, you know, this is like embedded in your core DNA. And so the eigenvalues are zeros of this polynomial, right? So I wonder, polynomial, I wonder what that polynomial looks like in our case. Can anyone take a wild guess? Okay, so let's look at the determinant of our matrix. Determinant, determinant. I only ask for you to guess because we've already seen the answer. So to KR equals minus 2i KZ2 over row 2. 
sine kz1 h plus i kz1 rho cos kz1 h. OK, where are the zeros of this? Well, when this thing is equal to 0, so that's when tan of kz1 h is equal to minus i rho 2 rho 1 kz1 kz2, or in other words, minus i b21. I guess I could write that as 2, 1. I think before I wrote it as 1, 2, didn't I? So let's, let's just be consistent, as consistent as I can be. Right? OK, so this is you know a nice little solution um, and looks a little bit familiar. So Pecoris also has normal modes propagating without loss. Because this, this solution has, um, so this equation has real solutions, right? When k2 is less than kr, less than k1. And so this is basically saying that at small, you know, you can have small k, steep angle, and uh, your grazing angle essentially above the critical angle, so energy just leaks into the bottom. Of course, you can have a complex version of this, modes decaying with rage, those are leaky modes. Um, and to actually find to go all the way back to the solution of the Hankel equation, we need to actually evaluate the Hankel and to do the contour integration. So, you know, it uh, leads us down the same path to the same solution that we've already looked at. But what I wanted to demonstrate is that this method of setting up a generalized problem oops, is very effective if we go back to the beginning, right? So you can see that we could apply the same method to many, a many, 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 many layered system. And um, as long as we can compute uh, determinants and other uh, and, and solve eigenvalue problems, we can compute um, we can compute the field. And so of course, in in you know, computational physics, this is like the problem that everyone is solving all the time. So of course, there's lots of efficient ways um, to find eigenvalues and find eigenvectors, and there's lots of different methods for dealing with problems um, like that, um, problems that come up when you're trying to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So there's a lot of tools at our disposal to solve this generalized waveguide. And of course, people have applied this to ocean acoustics. There are these wave number integral um, programs out there um, if you go to the Ocean Acoustic Library, you can, you can see some of them. So this is a really powerful method for, you know, given the limitations, of course, that we're talking about, that we're in a hor horizontally stratified ocean. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.